Google just released a crazy AI update that they are calling Nano Banana. And some of what it can do is pretty impressive. It takes the Gemini 2.5 Flash model and adds natural language abilities to the Imogen 4 image generator, and that is already a top-of-the-line offering. So taking these natural language adjustments, we're able to do some pretty crazy things when it comes to manipulating our images. It also makes the image generation process itself much easier to do, and it's also a very context-aware AI. And there are some pretty sensationalist claims out there. It's saying it's the death of Photoshop, and I don't know if that's true, but we can go through and we can test out some of these things in this new release together. So let's go ahead and hop right into that. So here we are on the front end of Google AI Studio, and all we need to do is click this nano banana thing. So it wants us to generate an image of a banana wearing a costume, but I think we can do one better and we can put me in a banana costume. So let's see what it makes of that. And there we go. That is indeed me. And I am wearing a banana costume. Now we know what I'm going to be wearing for Halloween this year. But there are also some pretty interesting things that we could do. We can, for instance, make me look very sad. And there we go. Looks a little bit different than me, so it's not perfect when it is shifting the expression, but if you are not shifting the expression too much, then it works quite well. So let's think about other things that we can do that would make more sense for print on demand. So here we are in the My Designs front end of Dream AI. And the reason we're here is we're looking for some images that we can pull that we can do some adjustments on using natural language. So this one seems fairly simple here. So let's go ahead and copy this image. Let's start a new chat here. We're going to go into Nano Banana. We're going to delete this. We're going to paste this image, and then we're going to ask for it to be softball. And there we go. Perfect. Softballs are this color. It has the same type of stitching. It's very similar to the original one. It's still isolated on a white background. So we could easily take this and use it for our own print-on-demand purposes. So let's look and let's try something else. Let's take this boot that has the floral elements and let's go ahead and adjust it. And again, we're gonna use a new chat just to keep it nice and clean with the context because that's what I do with all AIs because we don't want it to get muddy. So we've pasted this image that we pulled off of my designs and why don't we do a couple of things at the same time to see how it works. So we're going to isolate the boot and the bouquet of flowers, remove shadows, remove hearts, remove the watercolor swatch behind the image, center the boot and a bouquet. Okay, so that did almost everything that we asked for, which is very impressive. The fact that it's isolated on white means that we could use AI to remove the background very easily. It didn't center it, but I don't expect it to get everything right because it's still AI after all. But now that we have this isolated, we can do other things. Why don't we play with the color theme? So let's just give it something very simple. Make it boho colors. And that was an excellent shift into a more boho color palette. And just kind of rolling back to the fact that we're able to isolate things on a white background, it really changes our ability to have AI-based workflows for background removal. And that can be a very significant time saver. And if you look at how good of a job it did in terms of maintaining the original image instead of doing a kind of cheap reimagining of the image, that's actually significantly better than what ChatGPT could do. The chances of ChatGPT getting that piece of things right and not losing a ton of detail is pretty much zero percent at least at the time of recording this video so here we are back in the dream ai front end and we're going to take this dog and we are going to make a t-shirt with it okay so here we are all we're doing is we're asking for it to add some words and zoom out so let's go ahead and run it and see how it does and there we go something that did a very good job we can obviously make adjustments with the typography we can swap it out but what I really liked is that if you zoom in here, 
you can tell that it used the color swatches from the existing image in order to choose the color here. And all we would need to do is run this through my designs or some other software to remove the white background. And since it's white, AI will play very well with it. Now, another really cool use case is that we could take this and we can go ahead and put it on a mug or a t-shirt or whatever we want, right? So since this is a white background design, it would probably pair very well with a white mug. So let's put it on an 11 ounce white mug. So we're going to combine that with this image of me and see if we can put it on an 11 ounce mug. And there we go. That has some pretty serious fidelity. This is an identical image. Uh, this is definitely sized to be an 11 ounce mug. Obviously, this is not the best image to use because it's not me full body. So let's see if we can get Google to do a better job. Okay, so we're zooming out and putting me in a coffee house setting. Okay, so that's a little weird. It didn't work out perfectly, but you kind of get the idea. Okay, so I asked for it to center the image better vertically on the mug, and it did that. It took it and it isolated it on a dark background, and it did that. And it took me out of the image, and obviously it's isolated. Um, and instead of having it look like this only, let's essentially make this a mock-up that you would see on Etsy. So all we're asking for is for it to mirror the image essentially and we want it to have the exact same image on either side which is a best practice for tumblers and mugs. And then we are going to have the second mug have the handle on the other side to make it obvious that it is a mirror image. And this did exactly that. It even appears very much like it is three-dimensional. This is a solid mock-up. I think that it would work, especially if we spruced it up a little bit in the background. Let's see if we can make it more of an Etsy-style background. So we're asking for it essentially to make it more like a lifestyle photo, and let's see what happens. So we're asking for it to zoom in on the mugs to make it the focus of the image. And because this is AI, it does not want to do that, but that would be a fairly simple thing to do in Photoshop. So maybe this is not going to fully replace Photoshop. But we could also try to see if this does a good job of making it softball. And then we can ask for a style shift of this image. So here we ask for a style shift of this reading design to be more gothic, but we want to keep it isolated on a white background. So we went ahead and did that. And we can look over here and we did do a pretty simple shift. All it did was shift the balls to be softballs. So I don't know how much of a win I would consider that to be. So here we are after asking for it to shift a little bit more gothic. And it did a great job of shifting into gothic here. We've got a lot of the same elements. It's changed the color palette. It started including skulls. We've got things that look a lot more like tomes. We've got bats. We've got a gothic window here. And if you compare it to the original, it is definitely more gothic. It's still very much based on the same image but it did a pretty strong stylistic shift. So overall, we've done style shifts, we've done character shifts, we've added words to create a design. Another thing that I wanted to show you is that we can definitely alter very small individual elements. So we can, for instance, swap out this skull for something else. So we can remove the skull and put an ink pot there. And that targeted change is an incredible change that was not capable of being done in any of these major image generators before. Okay, so here we are. We're going to ask for Google AI Studio to do something that only ChatGPT was able to do before. And that is taking an existing style and applying it to a new image generation. In this case, we're trying to apply it to a pumpkin. So let's see what it does. And that did a shockingly good job of duplicating the feel of the elements here and it opens up a lot of possibilities for doing themed digital art sets like you would see on etsy and we're going to ask for something different 
but we're going to go extremely natural language here and say, same idea, make a voodoo doll. And there we go. How horrifying and also exactly what we asked for. Now let's do a little bit of a stress test. And over here, I just asked for it to combine all three elements, put them each on a different mug and put it on a table. I asked for it to zoom in so that the mugs occupy almost the entire frame. So if we look in here, we have perfectly sized mugs. We've got the images perfectly put on here. And I am highly impressed by this capability. So we're giving it another instruction. We want it to take the ghost image on the 11 ounce mug and make a pretty woman sip from it in a coffee shop setting. Almost but not quite. Let's see if we could fix it. And so we tried a couple of things and what ended up working was asking for more action. We made her toast with the cup towards the camera. And here we go. And that's a pretty impressive result to me. So you can imagine that this is the kind of thing that might work in social media or Etsy. Okay, so we went ahead and we took this image and we told it to put it on a white t-shirt worn by Taylor Swift. And there we go. We have our unofficial AI sponsor that looks exactly like Taylor Swift. So you're going to see a lot of this kind of thing on the internet. And I wouldn't personally be posting anything like this on social media, but I just thought it was interesting and thought you might want to know about it. Okay, so that was Google's Nano Banana Gemini 2.5 image preview, whichever one you want to call it. It has a lot of very strong capabilities and you could do it all in natural language. Some of the stuff you're able to accomplish far outstrips what you were able to do in ChatGPT. And that was the gold standard for natural language adjustments for images. And we can do way more than we were ever able to do before. Now, if you are interested in learning how to do a very fast AI workflow, then you don't need to look any further than Kittle Flows, which I covered in this video over here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in that video.